Hey guys, Professor Fat Shady here. Um, I'm not going to give you a tutorial today on a particular track or obstacle or challenge. This is going to be a discussion around a technique, and specifically the bunny hop. Actually, I've just realized that little... Ah, you can see the side of the track from here. Sorry, I get distracted by shiny things. My apologies. Um, what I wanted to do is find an obstacle within a track that would give you the best opportunity to practice the bunny hop technique. It didn't have to be particularly hard or challenging, but unfortunately I have picked one of the harder tracks in the game. Uh, this is Red Link's Derby, and uh, it is hard difficulty. If anyone's got a better suggestion for a track at an easier difficulty, I will uh, happily hear that in the comments. But for now, let's use this example. All I wanted to find was a flat platform at the start, a gap, and a flat pl platform at the other end. We can, once, once you learn the basics of the bunny hop, you can transfer these skills to, you know, jumping up higher, jumping down lower, landing on a slope, all those other techniques. But for the moment, let's just focus on the core basic bunny hop technique. What I, what I really need you to focus on, and I've said this in a previous video, but I'll do this again here. The bike, I mean, this, this game is all about physics. The reason why this game stands out amongst its competitors is because it's based on the, the actual physics of an independent rider interacting independent from, you know, he's animated and, you know, his weight and momentum influence the bike in a different way. And look, just by moving the rider, this bike can do some pretty crazy things. And you can also see, have a look at the back wheel and have a look at the, the sort of, you know, the rear suspension here. The back of the bike is actually, like, the, uh, the my weight is compressing down on those springs. That in physics terms, from what I remember from 15, 20 years ago in high school, was is uh, what they call potential energy. And what you're effectively doing is loading the springs under pressure. So when you release that pressure, they will actually give, they will, they will create a force and they will, it will generate energy and it will propel you forward. That's what a bunny hop is all about. There's numerous ways to do it, but in essence, if you just start from a seated position and try and do a bunny hop, it's not physically possible. You can't create, like here, if I'm hitting hard to the left on the uh, left analog stick to try and push myself down over the back and I can't do anything because I'm already sitting down. You can't, you know, you're, you're already back there. So to, gener to, so to generate spring for a bunny hop, you either need to be standing or uh, leaning forward. Now for the moment, let's just talk about standing. But if you have a look here, when I sit down, I can compress those back springs, can't I? That will build up potential energy and that will allow me to launch myself forward. The idea behind a bunny hop is this. As you start accelerating from the platform, you want to push back. See, the rider was just looking at me there like I was taking too long. As you, as you accelerate here, you want to lean your, uh, you want to lean back to the left, and you want to sit down over the bike, and that will build up the um, energy in the springs. But as soon as your body weight sinks down into that seat, and you build up all of the pressure, just at the point where you've got maximum load on those springs, you then want to push yourself forward. What that does is releases the pressure. It actually does two things, and it's fascinating when you understand the physics of what's sort of going on with this game. As you do that, you're not only releasing the potential energy from the rear springs that you've just built up by sitting down on the bike, but what you're also doing now is lifting your body weight forward. And the momentum of your body and all of your sort of body mass is also pushing, uh, well, sorry, you're, you're, you're actually pulling the bike. You're, you're, you're taking your own body weight forward, and because you're holding onto the bike, you're actually pulling it with you. So it's a combination of two different types of energy that you've just sort of created by this dynamic movement that will actually get you to to clear larger gaps and climb higher heights and it's and everything else in the game is just an extension of those sort of mechanics so let me just do a bunch of them here and you'll get a bit of a feel for this all right and the reason why i like this platform is just you know don't worry about if you land or not um the, the reason why i like this is you see those blue and white rings here you can you can judge how well you're going by where your sort of back wheel touches right so i can do this where you know, depending on how I want to go, I can get my back wheel almost to the other side, right? Without, without any form of run-up or anything, if I actually had a run-up... There we go. I can clear the entire thing. And that is what you want to be doing, instead of just sort of, you know, if you just accelerate here, or if you just sort of lean forward, you see what I mean? Like, your, your, your back wheel is kind of just barely coming in contact with the edge of this pipe. With the, with the bunny hop technique, you should be able to get quite a lot of distance. Um, I also find this, so look, I, th I think that might be it. I don't, I don't want to dwell on this too much. It's a pretty quick and succinct left, right, 
and then potentially a left again movement. The only reason why you do that third movement is sometimes when you lean like this, you see if you finish a bunny hop like that on some obstacles, especially when you're trying to climb while doing a bunny hop, if you you know if you if you you know press down to build up the pressure, forward to generate the forward momentum and sort of pull the bike along in the air. If you leave your body weight like that, you'll tend to have the rear wheel sitting too low and, depend and if there's something you're trying to climb over, the rear wheel will catch. So you usually finish a bunny hop by then seating yourself back down again and what that will do is then lift the rear wheel up to your new height. So your body weight goes forward first and then you lift the bike up to come up to your level and to join you at that higher, further propelled, you know, further forward position. Um, I'll do a bunch here and just so you can get an idea of what I'm doing and like I said, you know, it's a it's a pretty quick motion. It was funny. I was chatting to somebody on I think it was Twitter earlier today, and they were questioning me because I said it was a, a very instant uh, left right kind of movement. And what I think they were doing is sort of you know not quite getting it right. Um, it is all about timing. Timing is crucial, and I suggest you get to this obstacle and just experiment. But there there is you, know, you can argue there's a bit of a delay, and like I said. The, it's not just an instantaneous left-right thing. Um, don't, don't sort of do it carelessly. Think very carefully about what you're doing. You are waiting until the maximum load is over those back springs and then releasing that pressure. And it's that pressure that gets you the jump. Um, pay attention to it, practice, experiment. Like I said, you, use the, the blue and white markers here to judge your distance um, from a restart. Now, if you sit and play this for half an hour, if that's what's gonna help you enjoy the rest of this game by understanding the techniques and understanding how the uh, bunny hop works, do it. Um, if you get bored, uh, I was doing this just in preparation for this lesson. I was actually sort of then starting to give myself a challenge where I wanted to, you know, try and stop here and land, you know, do a bunny hop, but then land and like, try and, you know, do a endo on the front wheel kind of thing, you know. So you're trying to, so, and, and this is, I will say this playing is worthwhile, even if you don't think it is, right? Because it's teaching you how the bike handles and it's giving you much finer control. So like stuff like that, so I can sort of land on that, or even trying to land on just the rear wheel. And balance yourself. Now I'm digressing from the bunny hop technique, but what I guess I'm encouraging you to do is experiment. Give yourself the freedom to play. Don't just race these tracks at 100% all the time, because you're, what you're failing to do is acknowledge the the I guess the underlying techniques. Only when you appreciate the underlying techniques, only when you really, you know, the, the bike does become, and it's going to sound like a cliche, but the bike does become, I guess, an extension of your fingers and you can instinctively deal with problems, will this game truly become enjoyable and you'll find yourself going through extreme tracks for a laugh and yeah, just, 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 just to sort of blast through them and you know, have a bit of fun. So I would strongly suggest uh, and encourage you to play around with this. Um, just experiment, play here, uh, practice that bunny hop a hundred times, and um, hopefully that'll make the, the game a lot more enjoyable. Um, the other thing I will teach you just before I uh, switch this off, and we're eight and a half minutes in already talking about one jump. Um, also, um, you can use this as, an, as another example, a, a good place to practice this uh, rear wheel hop where what you sometimes want to do is sort of transition from one obstacle to another without even touching your front wheel down. That's a much more advanced technique, but this is a perfect one. It's actually a pretty easy place to do it, um, but you can sort of practice. So again, don't, don't just sort of go through it. Practice actually getting a, a proper bunny hop from that second jump. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just something else I found. This is just a really cool obstacle. And I think the reason why I like this track is because it's, it's very simple. There's no sort of complex physics. And this, um, yeah, this track just sort of lets you play and experiment and really just focus on the riding techniques rather than all of the, you know, all the big jumps and all the other stuff, which is, you know, fun parts of the game. But, um, yeah, when you want to get down into the technical stuff, you sometimes just need a bit of a place to, yeah, just, just practice and give yourself a place. And I really think this Red Links Derby track was designed to solidify your skills and understanding before you moved on to some of the extremes. So anyway, that's the end of my little bunny hop tutorial. I really hope you found that useful. Um, let me know in the comments if there's anything else you need or if you think I've skimmed over something. Um, but yeah, that really should be enough. And like I said, just experiment. 
bunny hop a thousand times and do it a thousand times more because it is just so crucial for you to be able to really get the most out of this game. If you haven't got this right, and if you don't really understand what's happening, you're going to have a, a lot of trouble. So, yep, that's it for me, guys. Thanks for watching, as always. And, um, yeah, until next time, that JD out. I never wanted to say that, sorry. I'm a loser sometimes. Look, it's 1 o'clock in the morning. Cut me some slack. All right, thanks, guys.